In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's Spirit hovered over the water. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God said, Let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two, and so it was. Then God said, Let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass, and let dry land appear. And so it was. God said, Let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. God said, let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night, and let them indicate seasons, days, and years. Let them be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, the smaller light to govern the night and the stars. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. Let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. God said, Let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves. God fashioned man of dust from the soil. Then he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and thus man became a living being. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. So he made him fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and enclosed it in flesh and made woman. And God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, and there he put the man he had fashioned. And he warned him, You may eat indeed of all the trees in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you are not to eat, for on the day you eat of it you shall most surely die. The serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that God had made. It said to the woman, No, you will not die. God knows that on the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She gave some also to her husband, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. And they hid from God, among the trees of the garden. Then God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, be accursed beyond all wild beasts. I will make you enemies, you and the woman, your offspring and hers. It will crush your head, and you will strike its heel. To the woman he said, I will multiply your pains in childbearing. You shall give birth to your children in pain. To the man he said, with sweat on your brow shall you eat your bread until you return to the soil. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And he expelled him from Eden to till the soil. He banished the man, and in front of the garden he posted cherubs with flashing swords to guard the way to the tree of life. We've told you the old story with the help of the imaginative illustrations that Raphael painted on a vaulted ceiling in the Vatican, paintings now known as Raphael's Bible. For the Bible itself provides us with imaginative illustrations, with poetic fables and provocative allegories, the Garden of Eden, the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil, the Cunning Serpent, the Forbidden Fruit. But reality lies beneath the didactic and popular forms of storytelling suited to the unsophisticated mentality of a primitive people. The reality of the divine origin of the world, of the rebellion of man against God, of God's punishing justice and his promise of the Redeemer. 
It sounds like a fabulous legend or a fanciful myth, but it is history, passed down to us in a book we call Holy because its inspiration is from God and because its message to mankind is holy. It tells the story of divine love rejected by man's rebellious pride and then jealously sought from a merciful and forgiving God. The heroes of the story are all men chosen, summoned, and loved by God. The first of these are the patriarchs. They begin the history of the chosen people, and at the same time the history of all people, because the salvation promised to Israel is the salvation of the whole world.
What offerings are these, Cain? They're unworthy of the Lord. Come on, I want to talk to you. Come on! Hurry up! Cain, 
Where is your brother, Abel? Why ask am I? My brother's keeper. What have you done? Listen to the sound of your brother's blood crying out to me from the ground. Now be accursed and driven from the ground that has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood at your hands. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield you any of its produce. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer over the earth. The end has come for all things of flesh. I have decided this because the earth is full of violence of man's making, and I will efface them from the earth. I mean to bring a flood and send the waters over the earth to destroy all flesh on it. Every living creature under heaven, everything on earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant Make yourself an ark out of resinous wood. God has spoken to me and said, I have prepared to send down on the earth the great flood. Man shall perish and I shall destroy all living things. Mankind shall vanish from the face of the earth. But I will establish a covenant with you 
that you may be saved. Brethren, turn again to repentance. Ask pardon of the true and only God and honor his holy name.
After 150 days, Noah opened the porthole he had made in the ark. And he sent out a raven, and it did not return. Then he sent out a dove to see whether the waters were receding from the surface of the earth. The dove, finding nowhere to perch, returned to him in the ark, for there was water over the whole surface of the earth. After waiting seven more days, again he sent out the dove from the ark. In the evening, the dove came back to him with a new olive branch in its beak. God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And the descendants of Noah said, Let us build ourselves a town, and a tower with its top reaching heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves, so that we may not be scattered about the whole earth. When God saw this, he said, So they are all a single people with a single language. And God confused their language on the spot, so that they could no longer understand one another. He scattered them thence over the whole face of the earth, and they stopped building the town. It was named Babel, because there God confused the language of the whole earth.
of the descendants of Noah, God chose Abraham and said to him, Leave your country, your family, and your father's house, for the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so famous that it will be used as a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who slight you. All the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves by you. When Abraham had reached the country of Haran with his father, he set out on his way again, following the commandments of the Lord. He led his people into the land of Canaan, and then from Canaan on into Egypt, for there was a famine in the land. From Egypt, Abraham returned to the Negev with his wife and all he possessed, and his nephew Lot was with him. Years and years of wandering, of struggle, of wearisome pilgrimage, undertaken because Abraham was obedient to the will of God. At last he found his way into Palestine again, back to the land of Canaan, for this was the place God had intended him to have. This was the promised land. You'll soon see, Sarah, dear. We'll be bored with this life of ease before long. <laughs> Get out of my way, you! Why should I? I'll show you why! Ugh. One of your herdsmen is fighting with one of Lot's. 
Well, Abraham, is this another gift of God, just to make sure that we don't get bored? Shepherd is the man who started it. And you. How often have these fights broken out? And instead of stopping them, you cheer them on. Yes, well, that shepherd wanted to water his animal before we watered ours. What about it? On top of that, they maintain your nephew Lad is the is a real master What's here. What's going on? Two of our shepherds were fighting over a stupid question of precedence. Between us, these arguments should not arise. Because all of us are brothers. Lot. Here we are. We've reached the end of our journey. A great land spreads out ahead of us. Pick the area that you want. And let us separate in peace. turn. We'll do this in order. Five. Another five come forward. Move quickly. Don't waste time. One of Lot's warriors. In the valley of Sidim, the kings of the east defeated us and sacked the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot, is he still alive? He's a, a prisoner with all the rest of Sodom. The Elamites are taking them all to the north.
good many of them. And they're well armed. Let's attack them immediately, while they're tired. It's not the right moment yet.
The son who was promised has been born. And he is called Isaac. But God wished to test once again the faith of Abraham. High on the kindling wood, and don't make any noise. Take your son, your only child, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. Wait for us here. The boy and I will go up to the mountain top and make our sacrifice. I won't take long. Come, Isaac. Shall I come along, Abraham? You might have some need of me. No. I'll be all right alone, Eliezer. Stay here. Get busy, you. What are you waiting for? If you turn to stone, take that saddle off the beast and find some butter for us. What do you want, my son? We brought wood and fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? God will provide the lamb for the sacrifice.
Abraham, Abraham, do not raise your hand against the boy. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. Abraham wanted his son to marry a girl from his own homeland, and so he sent Eleazar, who found Rebekah of the tribe of Nahor, Abraham's brother, and brought her back for Isaac. Rebekah bore him two sons, Esau and Jacob. We're here, Rebekah. Fine. <sighs> now, Deborah, go immediately and prepare what I told you. And take care no one finds out. Jacob, I want to speak to you. The moment has come to make a vital decision. This morning, your father had a long talk with your brother Esau. I overheard them. I heard your father ask him to bring the game he'd killed for some kind of special supper. Your father said he would eat and put his blessing on Esau, the blessing of the Lord, because your father is an old man and may die. Now, do just what I tell you. Go to the flock. Select two of the best sheep and bring them here. I shall prepare a stew cooked with herbs and delicate spices. And you will offer him this special dish. And his blessing then will fall on you. Why must I play a trick like this on my brother? Have you decided to disobey the Lord God and put your will before his? No. Certainly not. When you were conceived, you and Esau, I heard the Lord's voice uttering a prophecy concerning your lives. Let me repeat it to you. Two great nations will be created, and two populous lands will flourish out of the sons of Isaac. The firstborn shall be servant of the second, because Jacob will take away his father's blessing. You are my second-born son, Jacob. Besides, Esau has already sold you his birthright, hasn't he? But we were only jesting together. Esau happened to be hungry and began to shout. So I felt that I wanted to... to have some amusement at his expense. But Esau was serious in what he did. He gave you his rights to primogenitor merely for something to eat. It was a joke. No! It was because the Lord put into your mouth and that of your brother the question he wanted you to ask as well as your brother's answer. Your voice, your voice is Jacob's. Your arms, your arms. I like those of Esau. Are, are you with my son Esau? Yes. Kiss me, Esau. Kiss me, and I shall give you my blessing. It is my son because his odor is like the fields that God has blessed. I ask the Lord to send rain to your lands and to fertilize your gardens with abundance in your harvests and unending plenty. The nations shall bow before you and your line shall extend all over the earth. Your brother shall serve in your house, and the children of your mother 
shall have you as sovereign. God will curse those who curse you and bless those who bless you. Discovering Jacob's deceit, Esau threatens to kill the brother who has stolen his birthright. And so Isaac decides to send Jacob away, and the young man goes to the land of Laban, his uncle. God, you are with me. I didn't dare hope that you were with me. What I see, this land is yours, leaving men to you. O oh Lord, grant me your grace and protection on this journey. Give me enough bread that I may eat and raiment to cover me, so that I may return to the house of my father. And I here promise to you that I shall raise up a temple in this place. And of all that I may obtain, I promise that a sizable part shall be set aside. <laughs> If I wanted to kill you, I could have done it already. Or do you think I missed my aim? You just remember I've never missed in my life. <laughs> Twice now I've been cheated. You stole my rights of primogeniture. But, but it was your doing. You traded them for something to eat. You miserably took advantage of a starving man. You helped yourself to the blessing of my father. The blessing that rightly belonged to me. I'm going now, Esau. It's your responsibility to lead the tribe now. I'm leaving. And never come back. I don't want to see you again. This is what I came to tell you. Don't return. Don't return ever again. Wait. Wait a moment, Esau. You... You mustn't say words like that. The Lord appeared to me in a dream last night. I saw a ladder reaching up to the sky. And on it there were angels ascending and descending. And at the top... It was the Lord. And he said to me, I am the Lord God of Abraham and Isaac, and I will give to you and, and to your progeny the land whereon you're sleeping. And one day your children, your descendants, shall be spread in all directions across the earth. The chosen race. I will watch over you and guard you with care and not abandon you wherever you may go, for I want you to return to this land and receive all I have promised you. Jacob, let me see you here again, 
And I'll show you what it is to have to fight like a man. Because I'll be here and I'll be waiting to kill you, Jacob. must part here, friend. Keep heading straight on towards the west. A day's journey will bring you to the well where your uncle waters the animals of his flock. I thank you. And the Lord repay your generosity and reward you with profitable trade. Let's hope so. As long as we don't deal with your uncle, we should be well off. <laughs> Farewell. Farewell. Brothers, where do you come from? Haran. You know a certain Laban, son of Nahor? Yes, we know him well. Ah. I hope he's in good health. Oh, he couldn't be better. Couldn't be any better. <laughs> Would you be kind enough to point out where he lives, or even show me the way? There, that's his daughter, Rachel. She'll be glad to take you to her father. Funny. I haven't had a thing to drink for hours. I'm a stranger. Please, could I have some water? There's all you want there. But you must wait for them to open it up. Why not open it now? The sun's hot. It's time, I should think, to provide the animals water and lead them to pasture. If you think you can lift up the stone that's over the well, go ahead. <laughs> We've got to wait for all the shepherds. It takes 12 men to lift it. If you'll help me, we'll manage. Get me some more of these steaks. Why? Who are you to give us orders? Go ahead. Do what the stranger says. It might be a lot of fun to see it. Put the 
first steak right about here. Well, let's go put it in here. Here, just between the stone and the rim of the well. Give him a hand. You come in. Grab hold of that. And push with all your might. Go on. Fine. Slip it under and push. Push hard. Now you two shove the stakes under. Good. Good work. Get me another stake, please, and put it in here. What are you trying to do, stranger? Squeeze yourself under the stone? <laughs> You'd need to be a lizard to do that. <laughs> That'll be all. Now put this one here. 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 Push hard. <laughs> Down. Lift. Hard. Harder. Come on, push a little harder. <laughs> Perfect. Out of the way. Thanks a lot. That'll be all. <laughs> Get your buckets. Let's go. We're almost like brothers. The same house, the same blood. The Lord has blessed my humble dwelling with your presence. Jacob, I've heard how you removed the top of the well with only three men to help you do it. It amazed me. You must have magical powers. Not at all, Laban. It was the Lord God who inspired me. He used wooden stakes, Father. <laughs> Get out of here. What do you think you're doing, idiot? Hmm. Used wooden stakes, did he? Mm-hmm. The Lord should be more generous with these inspirations. We'd be able to save time and effort. Hurry, Leah. Bring some bread and fresh milk for your cousin, that he may refresh himself and ease his hunger. You must be tired, too. Um, are you planning to stay for a while here with us, nephew? I'll stay as long as you permit me to stay. Ah! Oh, naturally. If you'll say yes, I'll work happily for you as an unpaid servant, Laban. Oh, my goodness, man. You're a guest in my house. The place is humble. We're just simple folk. I'm just a poor shepherd, as you found by now. In my house, everybody works. There aren't many servants. And God knows we can always use help. Another pair of hands. <laughs> Jacob, you'll be just like one of my own sons. There they are. They don't spare themselves when it comes to work. And it's time you said something to him. He's been here a month already. Yeah. And he's so bossy. Yes, and every day it's something new. He'll end up changing everything. For the better. You must admit it, for the better. For the better. But what's it leading up to? What's he going to ask in return? I haven't promised him anything, and he hasn't asked for anything. Wrong. You said to him, Jacob, you'll be like one of my own sons. Oh, don't you remember?
Oh, that's my father. I better go. Jacob! Till this afternoon, Rachel. I had an idea for you, Laban. Look here. Hey, you up there! Open up the first canal! system will be able to fill all the troughs. So a brook that was going completely to waste, rising and disappearing again into the dry ground, has become a precious reserve supply for your flocks. Wonderful. So now the poor animals don't need to trek all that way. There's water enough for them right here. Right. Right. Now listen to me, Jacob. The sheep get more rest and get bigger. Their milk increases and their meat is more tender. Their fleece gets thicker and stronger. Another inspiration from the Lord God, Jacob? Another inspiration from God, Laban. Uh, now listen to me, Jacob. Your situation here bothers my sense of, what am I trying to say, of justice. After all, just because you're my nephew doesn't mean you have to work for nothing. No, no. You've been here a month now. I really think it's about time we settle the question of your salary. I'll serve you, Laban, as long as you think I should. But then I'd like to marry your lovely daughter. You're in love with Rachel? Uh, <clears throat> How much do I think you should serve for my daughter Rachel? Hmm. Seven years? Oh. <laughs> Doesn't that seem reasonable, Jacob? You'll be taking away my lovely girl. <laughs> my lovely daughter, Rachel. Uh, uh, uh. Huh? Yes, be it as you wish. <laughs> have a look. <laughs> you see, what wonderful sons I have. What fine sons. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Certain the Lord wanted to bless my humble house with your presence. My heart bleeds with sadness when I think about losing my daughter, whom I love. But I'm glad she's going to you, savior of my house. Jacob the wise, Jacob the just. Come, friends, let's drink to his health and his happiness. To my nephew, Jacob. <laughs> He's stealing my beautiful girl. I'm sorry, Laban. I don't want to interrupt the fun, but the dinner is almost over, and I don't yet see my bride. That's true. That's true as can be, Jacob. Inside there! Attendance! Bring forth the bride of my nephew, Jacob. My sweet and lovely daughter, bring her out. Uh, 
Go on. Go on, Jacob. Run to her and embrace her. You earned her. My dear bride, I managed to pay my debt to your father completely, but the entire life of one much more worthy than me could not pay the price for the happiness that now I'm going to possess. Dying with love for you, Rachel, these seven years were endless, but if I had to do it all over again, I would. What is this? Is this some kind of a joke, Laban? <laughs> no, Jacob. But our agreement was for your younger daughter, Rachel. The law prohibits marrying off the younger before the older. You should have known that. But if you don't want her, I must ask you to be patient and wait till she finds a husband. And as soon as that happens, I'll be glad to let you marry my daughter, Rachel. But look at the poor creature. Look at poor little Leah. I'm afraid your patience is going to be sorely tried. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait a long, long time. That is unless... I'll make you a proposition, Jacob. You merely go ahead and marry Leah. And after the honeymoon is over, you may have Rachel. And for this favor, I'm only asking... seven more years of work. What do you... What do you say, uh, Jacob? Laban, let it be as you wish. Because this is the will of the Lord. Hmm. Caravan people can be so greedy, so 
so greedy. But Laban knows how to bargain. <laughs> ah, the little rascal, the little rascal. You like that sound, eh? You know what's in here, don't you? Gold. Gold. You don't know what that is yet. But when you're old enough, you will. Laban. <laughs> Raven, the time agreed upon between us is past now. Meaning what? I'm ready to go back to my homeland. And I ask you to release me and my wives and children and what belongs to us and let us go. But you... You mean I haven't found favor in your eyes, Jacob? You know what I've done. You realize your herds are more than doubled under my care. My work and effort have helped you to prosper and to become rich and wealthy. You admit that it's thanks to me you've been able to enjoy the blessings of God Almighty. I admit it. I admit it. Just tell me how much I owe you. When will I be able to work for my own family? Laban, I have 12 children. How much shall I give you? You don't have to give me anything. There's another way to pay. I'll go on looking after your sheep a little while longer, just as I used to do. Tonight I'll put aside for myself the sheep whose coats are streaked and spotted, and those that are black. And then I'll pick out his mind the goats that are spotted too. That's all I ask is my salary. These animals and any they give birth to shall belong to me. Fine, Jacob. Let it be as you say. It's an unfair pack. There are not many spotted sheep, and you know it. Besides, they're not worth anything. Let me explain why I did it. Last night, the angel of the Lord appeared to me in a dream. Jacob, he said to me, see what has happened to the flocks of Laban, how all of his animals are now streaked and spotted. The Lord God has seen how Laban has treated you. Is it the work of God? How else could the sheep change color? I'll explain, Leah. Animals are bred the same as men. The young have the characteristics of their parents. You'll see. Have patience. He's taken what was ours and changed the color of our flocks. The sheep are all spotted. He peeled the bark off sticks so they would stripe it and put them in the drinking water. Put the sticks where the goats would see them. The mother sheep were under the influence of those sticks. Every single lamb that was born has either a dark coat or streaks. And that's not all. Bring me one of those animals. You too. <laughs> Hey, you get me some water. I want to check on something. Now, 
childish, Jacob. It, it's not what you think I might Laban. have thought. It's just that in certain situations, certain types of men behave themselves in slavery. Laban. I'm aware that your attitude towards me isn't what it once was. You don't trust me as you did. In spite of the service I've rendered you with God's help and with all my strength for over 20 years. You've tried to deceive me. Every year you've changed the agreement between us. I had to. We agreed that you could have the sheep and goats that were spotted. And what happened? They were all spotted. And so you decided to keep all the spotted sheep and to give me those with stripes. And I went along with you. And then they were all like that. Then you decided to keep all the ones that were striped and to give me the black. And as soon as we'd agreed upon that, all the lambs were black. And seven times more you changed our agreement. And I went along with you. And every time you complained. But you want to take all my herds away from me. No, I don't. It's God who wants to give them to me. Because he's seen the work I've done. And how you've treated me. Jacob, let's not argue about it. Tomorrow is the day we shear the sheep. We can examine the situation. Give me time to think. At least let me think it over. And tomorrow we can calmly come to some decision once and for all. Eh? Will you propose another pact? And tell me that it's been changed afterwards? Once and for all doesn't exist with you, Laban. No, no, no. This time it does. Very well. We'll settle it tomorrow. The shearing. He's gone. He took, he took everything. The flocks, the tents, his wives and children, the servants, and headed west. Really? He, he took everything, you say? Yes. Oh, woe to my house. Oh. <laughs> ah, ah. He's ruined me. He's a traitor. We shall bury all these foreign gods. Let us purify ourselves. When at long last we reach the promised land, we shall raise an altar to the only true God, the God of Abraham and Isaac. Bury them.
better divide the caravan into two sections to manage things easier. Let the first complete the crossing before you start the second. Now get started. Esau gets to the first group and destroys it. At least the second is safe. Are you convinced your brother's coming here just to fight against us? All I have is appearances to go on. He's coming towards us with an army of 400 men. But you sent him 200 animals and fodder for them besides. Isn't that enough? I don't know, Rachel. Go now. You go and catch up with the others. I'll stay here until the two groups have forded the river, then I'll cross myself. Don't be afraid. The others are waiting for you. Forward! said, Jacob, return to your homeland, the place of your ancestors, and I will bless you. I wasn't worthy of your favor or of the trust granted to your servant. I was alone when I first crossed the Jordan so many years ago, and now I lead a multitude. I beg you to deliver me, almighty God, from the hand of Esau, 
I'm afraid. <laughs> that he might come and kill mothers and sons without mercy. I'm afraid, O oh Lord. Lord, you have promised. When you blessed me, telling me that my progeny should grow beyond number, hold your promise, O oh Lord, and save us. Save us and help us. <laughs> Will you come over here and I'll tell you? Why did you do that? And you? Aren't you good at fighting? Go on, get up. And defend yourself. Why must I fight with you? Who are you? If you prefer to get beaten, there's nothing I can say. So be it. Thank you. Afraid? Come over here. Fight. You're not tired, are you? Shall we begin again? want. Your breathing's regular. You don't, you don't struggle like a man. You don't make any effort. Let me go now. Dawn is just breaking. No! You can't go. Not yet. Not until you tell me who you are. Who are you? 
answer. In God's name, answer. Jacob. From this time on, you shall be called Israel, because you have fought with your God, and among men are victorious. I'm surprised you're not afraid of us, Jacob. I have returned to carry out the will of the Lord. I have been staying with Laban, the brother of Rebekah, our mother. And I have had to remain with him all this time. What was the point of those animals that you sent me? I hope to find favor in your sight, my lord. Well, you can keep them. I have plenty of my own. No, I beg you. I worked now for 20 years. And because of God's grace, I am well supplied in all things. But I have been put to the test, brother. For all the treachery I have employed upon others, I have suffered even more. Now, by the great benevolence of God, my sins are washed away in his sight. Receive my gifts, and show to me, I beg you, that they too are washed clean in your sight.
Let me come with you, my brother. My men shall be your escort. No. I thank you for your kindness. But as you see, I have young children in the caravan, sheep with lambs and suckling calves. If I force them on even one more day, all my herds will perish. Esau, you go on ahead of us. I'll follow, but slowly. No faster than the young ones, and my animals can travel. And I'll join you later in Seir. At least let me give you a few of my men as an escort. Don't trouble yourself, Esau. No harm can come to my people ever again, since our differences are settled. Jacob, let it be as you wish. I'll meet you in Seir. And God go with us. You say her. To say her. For the child yet to be born. I wasn't afraid, Jacob. I've never seen a man, a man with so much courage. Let's go. Get on. Are we going to follow them, my lord? No. Instead, we're heading toward the west, and Almighty God will guide us. Our son will see the light of day in the promised land, my land. And we shall name the boy Benjamin, because he has the blessing of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 